Well, good morning and welcome to the Stern Farm for Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church Family Fun Festival. We're uh, great to see all of you. We're excited to have you here. Obviously, this is very informal now. So parents, if you need to take children out, bring them in, whatever the case may be, please feel free to do that. Uh, we're going to begin with our call to worship as we traditionally do. And if you put that up on the screen, I think we have that. Psalm 133, verse 1. It's nice and short, so if you would stand with me, please. And read along with me, Psalm 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for the beauty of your creation. We look behind us, we look out through the uh, doors behind me, and we see your creation, the mountains, and what a beautiful day. Uh, but uh, nothing compares to your beauty, and we are here to worship you. We are here to devote our time and our attention to you, Father. So we ask that your spirit would be here in the music, in the praise and worship, and as is lifted up to you, that it will be a sweet aroma to you. And so we ask your blessing, we ask uh, you to join us, and I just pray that all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this is definitely one of my favorite Sundays of the year, getting everybody in the barn and outside of the barn. Shout out to the balcony people back there um, and the people out back. Hello, people out back. Um, there are seats, uh, or not seats, but there's uh, some TV feeds on either side. If you need to step out, you'll still be able to watch and listen. Um, but I love it. They tell us that they can hear us the whole way out at BCO and beyond, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's try, I don't know, maybe we can get him to hear us in Altoona or something like that. Altoona's probably a stretch. Tim said his house, so we'll, we'll aim for that. Um, and being that it's a family fun festival, I invited some members of my family along. That's my mom and dad, Greg and Celeste over there, and my sister Labrina right here joining us this morning. Um, and I, that sentence just ended. Okay, let's, let's just sing the song. <laughs> I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more at night, now I'm so happy and sorrow in sight, praise the Lord, I saw the light, I wondered so aimless, life was sin, I would have let my dear Savior in. Like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord I saw the light I saw the light I saw the light No more in darkness No more in night Now I'm so happy No sorrow in sight Praise the Lord I saw the light Just like a blind man I wandered alone Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then like a blind man when I feel back to sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in light. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord.
together this morning. Let's meet and greet. Maybe there's somebody that normally doesn't sit by you when we're in the church building. Make sure you introduce yourself. Once again, it's great to have everybody here. Okay, if you haven't figured out, this is a Denny Albright section down here. Welcome to all of you, all Albright fans. Raise your, raise your hand down there. All of you. there. There's the Denny Albright section. Okay, very good. It's great to have you with us. And we have people out back and, and, and down below. There is video feed, as Ryan mentioned. Uh, down back there. We especially want to make sure that uh, we thank the uh, Gary and Ann Stern. Gary, raise your hand back there. Um, this, is, uh, this is their farm and their parents' farm, I guess, and we, uh, we just greatly appreciate you opening all of this up to us to have a great opportunity to be uh, gathered together. This is the church family. This is your church. This is God's church, Martinsburg Grace Brother Church. So we just want to make sure that as you go through today, make sure that you talk to other people, connect with other people. If you don't know who they are, ask who they are, uh, introduce yourself, and, and just fellowship together throughout the day as the kids play and as we enjoy some good food. Again, we're going to have videos this afternoon. And so we do want to, again, thank Gary and Ann, as well as there's some others to thank. Um, you have to realize how much work it takes to move church from what is it, a mile or two away out here with the benches and audio equipment and the deacons, uh, you know, the deacons are probably all down below there somewhere. I think they're down back to set up the food tables, everything. So if you see one of the deacons today, please make sure that you thank them. It's an awful lot of work as well as the leadership team. I know uh, Tim and Jerry yesterday and, and all of them. I'm going to miss some Shirley and in, in doing logistics and setup. So if you see someone, they're typically wearing one of these red shirts, except for Brant. Where's Brant? Yeah, he's got his Fight Club shirt on somewhere. Yeah, if you, if you see them, make sure you thank them for all of the work that it takes to, to, to move everything out here. Uh, let me see if there's other announcements that we have. Oh, well, first of all, uh, if you see Gary and Ann, make sure you thank them for letting us use the farm. But also, you have an anniversary, 35 years tomorrow, correct? Yes, very good. All right. Yeah. And someone that, someone that regularly teases me and abuses me is going to get a little bit back here this morning, Lynn Ritchie. Lynn Ritchie, stand up. It's your birthday today. Yep, stand up. Anybody else's birthday today? Anybody else? You have to know how much she, she abuses me. So that, it's just a little get back for, for that. So uh, we want to thank you for that. Another big thank you. Do we have that picture? The, can you put that picture up? Kids, do you know what that is? It's a Gaga pit, and it was built by Glenn Reichard and Steve Colbert, and it is available for you to use and play today. And so some of you parents are like, what is it? It looks like a goat pen. Um, and that's pretty much what it, it is. But anyways, if you haven't seen the game played, make sure that you go over in the small barn off to the left over here. It's, it's over there, and uh, make sure you watch and see how the kids play that. But a special thank you to Glenn and Steve for they, they constructed that. Yep. Very good. You have a couple announcements? A couple quick somewhat music-related announcements. Uh, the Uprise Festival in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, is coming up on September 17th. Um, and that's, anybody can go to that, but we are taking a group from the youth group, um, and because it's coming up pretty quick, we actually need to set a deadline to sign up to be next Wednesday, September 7th, 
Um, so we're back to regular youth this Wednesday on the 31st. The following Wednesday, if you're planning to go to Uprise, uh, we need to know. I believe that's about $50 for a ticket. It's an all-day music festival. Um, it's a lot of fun. So please, uh, parents, kids, talk to each other about whether or not your student's going to be able to go to that. And then on September 25th, Through Inc. is holding a concert by a band called Seventh Day Slumber. Um, they're doing a small town America tour. They're actually a fairly big band that tours a lot. They're doing a small town America tour. Through was able to get them at a very discounted price, which is awesome. Um, so we're going to make that available for anyone who wants to go to that as well. It's targeted towards the youth, but if you're an adult and you like pretty loud, heavy music, you're more than welcome to come too. Those tickets can be purchased through itickets.com. Uh, we won't be going as a group and providing transportation because it's just down in, in East Freedom. Um, but kids, Students, this is a great opportunity to invite friends to something. It's not in a church building. It's, um, again, it's a pretty heavy concert. It, it should be pretty good. So make sure you're thinking about that. And, again, the tickets are on itickets.com. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Before we go to prayer and then have the ushers circulate buckets for offering, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, Tim received an email this morning from Jessica. Actually, it was from Lexi, correct? From Lexi Lay, uh, Jessica Walker, and they're related somehow. Maybe somebody knows. Um, Jessica gave birth to Bennett Walker on August the 14th, and he is struggling with some pulmonary and lung issues, very severe. So we're going to be praying for Bennett this morning as well as for Jay Mason. Jay is the grandson of Gary and Ann Stern, uh, the son of Jen and Steve Mason, and we had some good report yesterday. The lung did inflate, and so there is some progress, but these two little guys are still struggling, so we're going to take some time to pray for them this morning and then circulate the offering bucket. So if you would bow your heads with me, please. Father, we just uh, come before you. You are a great God. You are amazing, and uh, you are all-powerful. And so we call upon your name for these two little ones. We, we just pray for Bennett and we pray for Jay. We just pray that you will continue to strengthen them, give the doctors and nurses wisdom. Uh, you have given us the miraculous power of medicine that you work through. And so we just ask that you would uh, continue to be with them as well as their families. This is a struggle for grandparents, for parents, for family and friends. And uh, we just ask that you would draw near to them. Father, we thank you and praise you for the blessing that we have to give back to you and to give to you a portion of that which you have given to us. So we ask your blessing upon this offering. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you're going to see, we have some baptisms later this afternoon, and what we will have done is we have some video testimony of each of those individuals that will be baptized, and so we're going to go ahead and run that loop for you right now. Hello, my name's Dennis Albright. I'm Ruby Albright's other half. We've attended for about two and a half years. Hello, I'm Mike Williams. This is my wife, Leslie. Uh, we've been attending Martinsburg Grace Brethren for four years. Hi, my name's Ted Kane. This is my lovely wife, Sue, and we're from Osterburg, Pennsylvania. We've been attending church here for roughly two years now. My name is Julia, and I'm 11. Hi, my name is Aaliyah. I'm age 11. Hi, I'm Ava, and I'm nine. Hi, I'm Jacob Ritchie. I'm 10 years old. Hello, my name is Eli, and I'm 11 years old. Hello, my name is Zach, and I'm 10 years old. I'm Aiden, and I'm seven years old. I think watching the gymnastics was my favorite event. Hussein Bolt. Men's swimming, Michael Phelps. Yeah, we watched a lot of Olympics this year, and uh, my favorite sport is soccer. I played as a child up through high school in City League in Altoona, so uh, I can't get enough soccer. Uh, and I love the gymnasts. I love the gymnastics. Women's gymnastics. Um, one night I, I was going to watch the gymnastics Olympics, and it came on too late. Swimming. My favorite thing to watch at, at the Olympics is swim team. Rugby. Diving. The swimming. Well, at age 66, about two and a half months ago, Pastor Brandt was teaching, preaching one Sunday, and 
Uh, I'm sure I heard the sermon many times before, but as we sing the one song, God opened the, my eyes to my heart. And when Pastor Brandt said that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, our life begins anew, it sounds preposterous, but it just felt like a lightning bolt went through me. I wanted to jump up and I couldn't move at all. And there were lights flashing all around me and I knew then that that's what I wanted in my life, that I wanted God as my, my God and Jesus Christ as my Savior. I accepted Christ as my Savior when I was 10 at a church in the foot of 10 area. And I accepted Christ as my Savior when I was 30 at Grace Bible Church in Haldaysburg. Uh, I accepted Christ as a, as a small child in a, in a Catholic church and uh, probably didn't really understand the meaning of that. And as I grew older here, I've uh, really become interested in a lot of things and that's why we come back to church here. And I accepted Christ as a child myself too. And uh, I've kind of grown these past couple years and really like this church. I accepted Jesus when I was younger and with my mom in my bedroom. I accepted Jesus in my bedroom in Maryland at age seven. It was in my bedroom when I was eight. I knew that he died for me and that I wanted to um, support him. I accept Jesus as my savior when, when I was little. Um, when I was young with my parents in my bed. A few years ago in, in my basement, I accepted Jesus as my savior with my mom. I accepted Jesus with whenever I was four years old with my mom. Well, I want to get baptized to demonstrate to my family and to the church that God is my Savior, and I want to serve the people of the community and serve God. It's really, when I retired, that's what I said I was going to do, and now I want to show that I'm going to do it. Um, I don't know my family will see a huge difference in me, but whether they do or not, hopefully over time they will but I want to serve other people. I want to get baptized to show my loyalty to Christ. I want to be baptized just as an outward symbol of my love for Christ. The reason what we want to get baptized is we want to profess our faith and become members of this church and we want to do it in front of the congregation. And we would like to become lifelong members of the church. We really enjoy it here, lots of good people. I want to show other people that I love Jesus. So I can show people that I gave my life to Jesus because I want to show others that I love Jesus and that I really support Him. I want to show everybody that I'm a Christian. Because I want to show everybody that I'm a Christian and that I accepted Jesus to be my Savior. Because I want to tell people that I'm a Christian and I accept Jesus to be my Lord and Savior because I want to show other people that I believe in Jesus. Well, it certainly is an exciting thing to have uh, everybody that you just saw being baptized later, um, and we'll do that right after lunch. So as you're wrapping up lunch, you'll see a crowd of people uh, huddling around the pool. Um, and no, it's not a cannonball contest, it's actually the baptism, so sorry, bad joke. So make sure you make it down to that. I um, really hope all of you can stay and, and support everybody who's being baptized today. Well, let's stand together and let's, let's sing some more and let's, uh, let's worship God together through song.
I know I was a sinner in need of a new start. The waters of my river ran dry on my own. And I know the road is long when all is lost. You light my way. My debt is paid in Jesus' name. Your light has brightened all the darkness in me. My eyes are open to see your love. Oh God, your love for me. I once was running from your love and mercy. I found the place I belong with you. I know I'm not alone. sin within me, but your hands were nailed to a tree. Your blood has set this captive free. Come on, let's sing this out. I know I was a sinner in need of a new star. The waters of my river ran dry. Our eyes are open to see your love. Oh, God, you set us free. And we know we all were sinners in need of a new start. The waters of our river ran dry. Tim's going to come share with us here in just a minute about unity. Um, so as we have that thought in mind, let's sing this chorus one more time. We know we all were sinners in need of a new start. We support each other and we point each other to Christ. I think that's, that's our goal um, when we're showing Christian unity. So let's sing this chorus one more time, nice and loud. And we know we all were sinners. Jesus. 
you so much for this day. I thank you that you have given us the opportunity to be able to be here and enjoy uh, Gary and Ann's hospitality. I thank you so much for bringing us together as a family. I pray that you would please just help us as we open your word that, that you would be honored and glorified in it and that you would change us to be like yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to go over here and wave out the window to say, hey, folks out back, how you guys doing? Thanks for coming. And uh, the folks that are over the bank there, I can't see you, but I know you're there. And uh, that's cool. There's a little water up here. I don't want to set that in that. <clears throat> so I found something interesting uh, in the testimonies that I want to share just briefly. I think it's interesting that for several as they came to Christ, it was a progression. It was, like, it was like the Holy Spirit unveiled things to them and helped them see things through certain times in their life. And that happened to me too. It was very interesting. I prayed a prayer when I was a kid, but I didn't understand it. And as I got older, I finally started figuring things out. And, I, and, and it was the Holy Spirit in me, obviously. It's not us. But it wasn't until I was 20 until I really saw who Christ was and what I was without him and that I needed him. I think it's really interesting. I think it's really cool. Don't move. I'm not allowed to move? Are you kidding? My, let me get my notes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Anyway, so last year uh, at Family Fun Fest, I spoke out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we talked about uh, the fact that we are a family and that uh, we each have different functions within the family uh, as parts of the body of Christ. And today, I want to expound on that a little bit. So if you have your copious notes from last year, you can take those out. How come I don't hear any shuffling of papers? Are you kidding me? Anyway, so we're going to talk about Ephesians chapter 4. If you have your Bible, go ahead and open up to Ephesians chapter 4. Um, we don't have the pew Bibles, so giving you a page number is not going to help much. But Paul was writing this letter to the church in Ephesus while he was in prison, and he had two things that he focused on in this book. Um, the first one was the focus on what we as believers are to be doing, um, as well as a reminder that, uh, of where we came from. And the other half, the second half, uh, has a focus of the grace of God that is given to the church, as well as to each of us individually. And I want to look at the very beginning of the second half, which is in chapter 4. We want to start in verse cha uh, chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to go from 1 to 6. So you're going to have to listen quick because i got a lot to share and not a lot of time to do it. Verse 1. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And I kind of want to look at these passages backwards. So we're going to start in verse 4 instead of starting in verse 1. Although we are going to cover verse 1 in this section as well. But he, he talks about, Paul shows here in this passage that the, he shows the unity of the Trinity, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are not going to spend a lot of time there because, to be honest, I haven't got that part figured out either as far as how that all works, how the three are unique and separate, and yet they are one in unity. Um, it's a kind of a joke between myself and Daryl and Brant because of the com one of the conversations we had about that. But each of those distinct persons of the Godhead uh, and the Trinity are, are, are present in this passage, and, and they're re referenced in here. We're told that there is one body, and that's a reference to the church, not just Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. It is a reference to the big C 
all-encompassing over all time, every believer church. Okay? One body. Without the denominational distinctives, the distinctive is that we believe that Jesus Christ is who he said he was, that he was the Son of God, and that it's only through him that salvation is attained because none of us are perfect. We all are a mess. So we have one body. We have one spirit. That is the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the one that Jesus said was going to come after he died. He said, it's better that I go. He said this to his disciples. It's better that I die and go after the resurrection. I'm going to ascend to my father. It's better that I do that and I'll send the comforter than if I actually physically stay here with you. That's pretty cool. I think that a lot of times we shortchange the Holy Spirit and who he is and the power that he has. So it's referencing the Holy Spirit, one spirit, one hope. That hope is Jesus Christ. It's the hope of salvation. It's the hope that we have that we're not stuck in our sin forever because he paid for it. He took care of it. That's awesome. We have one Lord, and he is our leader. If you remember back in medieval times, they had uh, people didn't own land except for the lords, right? And you had your Lord, lowercase l, not capital L, but you had your Lord that you worked his land and you helped him, right? You did what you could to help your Lord. We are doulos. We are bond servants. As believers, we are doulos for our Lord, capital L, and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have one Lord, one faith. That faith, if you have faith in anything other than Jesus Christ, your faith is no good. I hate to say that, but it's no good. You're not a true believer if you have faith in something other than Jesus Christ. One baptism, that identity, and I thought it was super cool that those kids on that video understood that as they got baptized, they were identifying with Jesus Christ. That's what that picture is, that baptism. Identifying with Jesus. One baptism, one God and Father. And this is the greatest, it's awesome, this is the, this is the greatest commandment in all of Scripture. You remember the, the, uh, the lawyer that came to test Jesus and he said, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6, not chapter 5, which actually has the Ten Commandments in it. He quotes chapter 6. And he says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then he goes beyond that and he says, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands hangs all the law and the prophets. The whole Old Testament hangs on those two rules. If you live by those two rules for your whole life, guess what? You will be perfect. Those are the only two rules of life. And I know I've preached on this before. Those are the only two rules you have for your whole life. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. If we can't be unified in this, we are sorely misunderstood as to who God is. And that brings us to number two. What does it look like to walk worthy? And that's in verses one through three. And I want to reread verses one through three. It says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace. This is how we're supposed to be showing unity, by living this out. Humility. We could spend all our lives on humility and not get it. Because as soon as you think you got it, you lost it. Gentleness. I struggle with this one a lot. I'm not a gentle person. I'm like a bull in a china closet. It's ridiculous sometimes. You can ask my wife. She can attest to that. You can ask my children. 
And I don't intend to be not gentle, but it's something I know I have to work on. So humility, gentleness, patience, another one of my downfalls. I'm not a super patient person. ADD does not allow for patience sometimes, right? Because if you're trying to be patient and you allow all that ADD stuff, it's like I'm patient here and then boom, my attention is gone and I'm like, wait, what, what, what was I being patient about? I don't remember, right? But we're supposed to be patient with one another. Long-suffering is another term for it. And that means that we're long-suffering through the garbage. We're long-suffering when people make mistakes. We love them anyway. So humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. And actually, that's really the long-suffering part right there. Bearing with someone, being willing to say, you know what? You've blown it. You made a mistake. I love you. I'm going to be here for you. Let's pray together. Let's get this thing figured out, and let's move forward. That's being loving. It's not being like, hey, let's, not, let's pretend this never happened. No, let's deal with the problem. You're going to face the consequences of sin, yes. But let's deal with the problem and move forward. So humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, and then eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. How many of us are eager to maintain unity with others? Generally, I'll be honest, and this is a, 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 when I'm in the flesh, this happens. I like to argue sometimes. I like to present the devil's advocate side of things. And that's not very nice. Sometimes it's necessary, but usually it's not. (laughs) But do we strive for unity? Why do we have a struggle with unity? And I really, I, I, I want to look at Ephesians chapter 2, and then we're going to close. I think this is the answer to why we struggle with unity. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it says this, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So why do we struggle? Why do we struggle with unity? Why do we struggle being patient, having humility, being gentle, striving for uh, uh, unity through the, through the spirit and the bond of peace. Why do we struggle with those? Because we're sinners. And some of us, there's not much struggle there. Some of us, we're just sinners, and because we, we, we enjoy it, we enjoy sinning, and we just don't care. We don't care how it hurts people. We don't care what it does to us. We don't care what it does to our relationship between us and the Lord. And we need to confess that. And when we see each other doing that, if you look in Galatians, it, Paul talks about how we're supposed to help each other through that. You don't shy away from it. You go and talk to the person and say, hey, listen, I'm seeing this in your life. And it doesn't matter what your station is. It doesn't matter what God's called you to be. Guess what? We as pastors, we fail too. And that means that we need you, our family, to come to us sometimes and say, you know what? I don't agree with you here. And sometimes it's like maybe even... A, a, an act of sin that you see somebody lose their temper or you, you see somebody do something they're not supposed to do. So you go to them and you say, hey, listen, what are you doing? That's what family does. That's what promotes unity. Maybe I'll talk on Galatians next time. We struggle because we have a hard time dying to ourselves and sin is an indulgence of self. We're still, for some of us, We're not believers. I'm I'm going to say it again. For some of us in this church, we're putting on a show. And I did that for the first 20 years of my life. I put on a show. And I wasn't a true believer. Did I know all the Sunday school answers? You bet I did. Some of us are still dead. In our sin. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we are called 
to be unified. And if you, if you, if you still don't know Christ, why wait another day? Why wait another minute? Why wait another hour? Make that change now. If you, if you want to talk to somebody, come find somebody in a red shirt or Brant. He's in a fight club shirt, like the one Jared was playing, the guy with the violin. It's the same kind of shirt. Talk to Jared. He's headed over to uh, Ohio to be a pastor. We would love to sit down and answer questions. And guess what? We may not even have all of the answers, but we will do our best to try to find those with you. But we can definitely show you how you can start that relationship with Jesus Christ and become alive spiritually, not dead. All right, I want to finish up with this. This is the application aspect. Number one, and this, is, this application is for those that are true believers. Number one, we need to determine to keep the main thing, the main thing spiritually. I think far too often we nitpick about the minutia and we separate over ridiculous things. And we're being foolish. We're not, we're not promoting unity. And by that I mean that we need to be less wound up about things that don't matter, especially with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that doesn't mean just that MGBC. That means at other churches too. Keep the main thing the main thing. We need to be less judgmental of other believers, particularly those in other churches. Be less judgmental. You, uh, the only time you can actually pass that kind of judgment if there, is if there's a tremendously erroneous doctrine that's being, I mean, that, I mean like big time, right? But if you're talking about whether or not they use praise choruses or they use contemporary worship, man, that is minutia. Let it go. I mean, for most of the country, that quit back in the 90s. Let it go. Or if they're using the NIV or the KJV, guess what? If they're using the Bible, God's name is being glorified. Yay! That's good. Be, be less judgmental. The second thing, determine to be humble, gentle, patient, loving, and strive for peace. Not just in your own life, but in the church, in this body, in your family here at MGBC, and around the world, really. Not just, so I just got done saying that it's not just here but it's around the world. So strive for those things. Remember that we need to emulate God, the Father. And these are his character qualities. These are who he is. We as believers in Jesus are called to be unified. That's our calling. So let's do it. Let's start today. And it's not gonna happen Yay, I'm done. I'm perfect. Woohoo. It's going to take time. And you're going to make a mess of things. That's part of being a family. We make a mess. And then we forgive each other. And then we move forward. And then we make a mess. And then we forgive each other. And then we move forward. And we keep doing it over and over again until Jesus Christ comes back. That's part of life making messes and being forgiven and moving forward. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the fact that we have the opportunity to be together and that we can hopefully learn how to be unified as a church family, not just here at MGBC, but all, all around. The other churches that are here in our community, the churches that are in Altoona and Hollidaysburg, the folks that are in western Pennsylvania, the rest of the state, that we would be able to see beyond ourselves. I thank you so much, Lord, for the fact that you love us and that you've shown us that we're not alone. 
Pray that we would love as we are supposed to love and be patient the way we're supposed to be patient and gentle and humble and promote the unity of the peace of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and sing.
Lord, thank you so very, very much for the fact that you inspired Paul to write about unity. And I pray that we would strive for it, even in the midst of messes, in the midst of being angry, we, we would set those things aside. And we would emulate the character qualities that you are. We pray in Jesus' name.